So continuing with the project that will never end. As you see, I have the computer opened up again. And you might notice a couple of changes. Basically what was going on is I was trying to load Windows onto the SSD and it wasn't recognizing the SSD. So in order to do that, I unplugged the actual hard drive because the hard drive was the only thing that was being recognized when I was putting the restore disks in. And as I had it open and I was installing Windows on the SSD, because now Windows 7 is on here, I noticed that I could have done this a little bit better because I didn't want this on the fan or anything like that, even though nothing would have been a problem with it. But I just thought it was, you know, I could do better. So I actually moved the SSD from wherever it was up here further up along the drive. And that's one of the luxuries of having such a, a tiny SSD. I can move it around in here. So as you can see, there is no more conflict between the fan and, or at least the airflow. And, uh, you know, this, this little mess I have here. So, uh, and you might also notice I exchanged out the, uh, the SATA cord or the SATA cord uh, with a different one because uh, I had a, a red one that kind of matched the other ones. And it was a little bit lower profile than the other one I had in there because it doesn't have a clip on it. So it's just easier to fit under there. So it looks like everything is, is uh, the best it's going to be as far as cable management is concerned. And again, my major concern is just nothing on the fan and nothing touching you know the motherboard or anything like that. So it looks like everything is good. Now all I have to do is put the screws back in the front here to mount this down and then I'm going to button everything up. The hard drive is now attached. So now that I have Windows 7 on here, I can format the hard drive in the GPT format. So hopefully I don't have to open this thing up again. Hopefully this is the last I'll be opening this up for a while. So wish me luck. So here's the finished product. Looks pretty much the same as it used to, except for that antenna in the back. And there we go. Windows 8. So I turned the computer off and what I would like to do is show you the speed at which Windows loads up on this computer. Now originally I didn't intend to have an SSD in this computer. I was just going to boot it off of the the six terabyte hard drive. But as it happened I do have an SSD in there now so this should boot up faster. So I just want to give you an idea of how fast this machine boots into Windows. So I'm going to turn it on three Not too bad, I think my other computer boots up a little bit faster, but that has the high-grade Samsung drive in it. But this is a good SSD as well because it's an Intel SSD. So we're here at the lock screen. Let me sign into my computer. So there we go, the computer boots into the start menu. And that's something that was included on Windows 8, but actually taken out on Windows 8.1 and I am running Windows 8.1 so I actually had to do something to the computer really just a setting just toggle a, a little uh, setting in there and I'm able to boot to the start menu now if this was a work computer if I was going to be using this computer for a lot of tasks I would boot it into the desktop because that's really you just want to get to what you want to do on the computer but in this case this computer is pretty much it has a narrow use case it's an entertainment PC it's my home theater PC so the best option for me was to boot into the start menu because I can actually have all of the selections that I generally use on this computer right on the start menu here and that's actually nice so what that affords me is the ability to use a remote. And this is my Windows Media Center remote. I don't know if you can see it there. I did a video on it way back when. And uh, it's actually an HP remote. It has a receiver that's attached to the computer so that it works. It's an IR remote. So you need a line of sight on this. But now when I, when I boot into this computer, I don't have to break out the keyboard 
to interact with it for the most part. I mean, if there's certain things I want to do that are, are a little more in-depth, then I would. But uh, I can navigate the start menu here just with the remote here. And I don't know if you can tell, it's ever so slight. I'm moving it around and you do get a highlight on the different tiles on here. So I can just navigate around and say I want to go into Windows Media Center. I do have a dedicated key on the remote for Windows Media Center. But if I wanted to dive in, I could just go and select it, as you see there. Just click the OK on there, and here we go. Windows Media Center. So I really like the PC. It really was a little bit over the top in setting it up. Anything that could go wrong probably did go wrong in this upgrade. Some of the problems were due to my own ignorance. I didn't know that Windows wouldn't boot off of a six terabyte hard drive, or it would, but it wouldn't recognize the full amount unless you did a couple of little hacks that my motherboard really wasn't up to snuff or up to, up to the task to do. So I had to you know, throw a boot drive in there and whatnot, as, as is documented in this video. But there's a lot that happened that wasn't in this video that went wrong, a lot of DRM issues and things like that. But anyway, it took me four days to get this ironed out, and I really like the upgraded experience from Windows 7 because having Windows 7 on this machine was more like just having a computer attached to your TV, which, which is what, what it is, but having Windows 8 on there is a little bit more friendly for a couch experience. Let me dive back into the Start menu. So I have this account set up. I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but in the upper right-hand corner it says Living Room. That is the name attached to this PC. And it's really set up, like I said, for a living room experience. The tiles in the first column are all entertainment. I don't know if you can read it, but that's what it says over here. It says entertainment. The next set of tiles is happening. I, I entitled it happening, which is basically things that might be happening, including the weather, which I have to localize still. That says Washington, D.C. I'm not in Washington, D.C. I just noticed that. Um, the calendar. Below that is sticky notes. Let me grab my uh, keyboard here. Right here is sticky notes. And I think that that's actually really a cool idea for a home theater PC to include that on there. Because what you would do, if you're not familiar, let me just click on that. And let's get out of Windows Media Center here. Just so I can show you a little bit better. Now, I haven't totally set up this PC yet, so there's a little couple of uh, things to iron out. One of which is my Google Chrome profile didn't log in. But that's okay, I'll take care of that at a, at a later date. Uh, here's the desktop. I really like to keep it as clean as possible. And what you notice here, the sticky note that I just opened up. So, you know, if, if this is your home theater PC, this is a really nice centralized area where you might want to, you know, write a note to a family member and put a sticky note on there. Or you could write it to yourself or whatever, but it's really a, a nice centralized area. Like, uh, I don't know. There you go. Sticky note. Pick up milk. So, or, you know, I'll be back at four, or something like that. It's a nice little uh, a way to centralize messages to family members and whatnot. So I thought I, I'd include that in there. That's a, uh, a program that's on, uh, on, comes with Windows 8. I don't know if it came with Windows 7. Never really use it much. But in this context, I think it's really nice. So again, in the happening here, I included that. Then you have the news here. Then my Outlook account, which is attached to this here. I don't really think I'm going to be um, using email on this too much because, again, it's my entertainment PC or my home theater PC. Uh, email is something I think you know, you'd want to be more attached to on a laptop or something because you, you have a full keyboard there generally. I mean, I have a keyboard, a full keyboard on this machine. But for the most part, I want to be using a remote on it. So I didn't think within the context here that having, uh, you know, centralizing my email would be a great idea. But, you know, this is the account that's linked. I created a, a brand new email address for this, this uh, computer here. So, you know, it's, it's good to have on there anyway. Then stocks down here. Sometimes I do trade some stocks, so it's nice to maybe have on here 
that I could check out. The next section here is utilities. So these are things that you might want to use on a regular or regular basis or a fairly regular basis on the computer and just have them there. So I have the desktop here, I have a Google search here, I have Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, this PC, which shows you what you have on your PC, PC settings, Windows Defender, which I'm using as my antivirus, OneDrive, which is the cloud storage, and then the Intel SSD toolbox, which is a program that I downloaded so I could optimize the SSD in there. So those are the programs that I would use mostly on a regular basis on this. Um, you know, this could change over time, but you know, just setting up the computer, I think these are three great categories. The first one, of course, being the entertainment, which I'm going to be using the most on this, and then the other two, which would be things I would be using fairly regularly. Now, of course, if you're familiar with Windows 8, you know that you have a whole host of programs. Just by going down here, you have all your apps down here. So you can scroll through them and add new ones to the uh, start menu as you see fit. So this is how I'm going to be using this for the most part. Uh, going into the desktop again, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, I kept it as clean as possible because this is not a computer I'm going to be doing a lot of work on. It's going to be, you know, something I'm doing a lot of consumption on. Also, something that I set up on this computer is Plex, Plex Media Server. Now, I'm not really somebody who has a lot of media, except I do have a lot of songs. So I wanted to switch from iTunes, which I've been using for many, many years, to Plex. So let's launch Plex here. And... So here's Plex, and if you're familiar with Plex, you know that it serves up not only music, but you can serve up videos on it um, and all that stuff. So whatever files that you might have, you put on here. And the benefit of it is that you can stream it to other devices in your house, like a Roku, like an Amazon Fire TV. If you have Plex Pass, which is something that you pay for on a yearly basis, you can actually stream it to your mobile phones and things like that. But uh, I'm not that deep into it. I just kind of like the availability of putting songs on here so I can stream it to the rest of my house. And this is actually a poor representation of what I have on the computer because I just put a couple on here just to try it out. I've, I've yet to put my entire collection on here. I don't know how many songs I have. I've got thousands of songs, definitely. So um, that's something I have to work on, you know, putting on the computer here. But I did want to get some on here just to show you what I'm using this computer for. Now generally this Plex server, you know, you can play the music right out of here. You can play the music right on this web interface here. But that's not the way I'm going to be using it. I'm just using it to store the media and serve the media and then from another device in the house like my Amazon Fire TV that I even have connected to the same TV here. In, in my entertainment center here, I'd rather stream to the Amazon Fire TV from the computer, which is about a foot away, than actually playing it through this interface here. Not that this interface is bad, I just prefer the user experience. So basically I'm just using this to serve it up and then organize it and then I'll you know shoot it to the devices throughout the house. But that gives you an idea of my home theater PC setup. Now I know a lot of you out there think I should be using Linux on this machine. And I would be using Linux on this machine if it wasn't for the fact that there's some TV shows that I record on my DVR. They need a DVR that you're going to get from your cable company. Or if you're going to roll your own DVR, you need a Windows machine to do it because they're copy protected, these programs on there. And right now, Linux doesn't offer the option to copy those. So I'm not somebody who pirates TV shows. I'm not, that's not my scene. You know, I'm not going to judge people who do but it's just really not my, I don't get into downloading things illegally or anything like that because I just don't believe in it. So I'm sure there's options if I wanted to, you know, use Linux and then download these programs from, you know, a pirate site or something like that. But I'd rather just have the TV, TV subscription and then, you know, record it and then watch it at my leisure. And I don't keep shows. If I watch it once, I'll never watch it again. So I just delete it after that. So living here in the United States, my only option is basically having Windows on here. And Windows Media Center is a decent DVR program. So that's going to do it for this video. For the most part, I'm really pleased with the results. Um, it was incredibly frustrating to set it up, but at the end of the day, I'm pleased with the results. I'm not sure 
the juice was worth the squeeze on this, but over time, I think it will be. So that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And as always, if you want to help out my channel, give me a thumbs up, favorite this video, or share this video. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.